Hello and welcome to The Download. I'm your host, Dave Richardson, and it is another exciting Stu's Days, a post-university drop-off Stu's Days. Stu, we, 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 were, we were dropping kids off in the same spot. We didn't even know. We maybe should have uh, mentioned that. We could have, we could have popped by uh, the uh, Shea Piggy in Kingston. <laughs> That's, uh, have, you, have you been to Shea Piggy? I, I have been there once. That was always, you know, the spot that, because uh, I went to Queens too, that was a spot that parents, when they came down, they yes. would they would take you out uh, for a dinner at, uh, at Shea Piggy. Yes. Shea, Shea, Shea Piggy. My, my, my wife was up, uh, she actually stayed over a couple of days with uh, with my daughter when we yep. dropped her off and uh, just a little, little ease into things. And uh, they went to a couple of places. Kingston's gotten, uh, gotten yeah. quite... Uh, Oat cuisine there on the uh, in 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 Kingston now, along with some some competitors for Shea Piggy. Yeah, there's a lot there's a lot going on. Uh, uh, it has changed quite a bit since I was there uh, almost thirty years ago. So so uh, so Stu, any any uh, IKEA furniture assembly this uh, this this past weekend? A, a little bit. Um, we had a little bit of assembly. You know, we were. You know, there's there's like the laundry hamper, all that jazz. There was, uh, yep. you know, some furniture in the in the res room, so not not too much. But to getting the Wi-Fi set up, uh, you know, that was a that was a test uh, for sure for uh, for techno stew. For for oh techno stew. Yeah, is not, that uh, is that what you're referred to as? <laughs> your yeah. daughter calls you that. That's techno stew. That's right. I think they they like to think of me as that, but I'm uh, I'm lacking. So I'm lacking. How about you? Wow, and in, in all these conversations we've had with you, Stu, that's uh, we, 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 uh, there, there's there's very few gaps in your game. But uh, I, I would not have thought that uh, Wi-Fi setup would be a gap for you. I, the IKEA furniture I could see, but uh, but but not the not the Wi-Fi. Yeah, no, I'd, uh, yeah, it it's it's just the instructions weren't clear. I, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> There, there, there we go. Well, I I I I warmed up. I had so your your eldest is, is off this 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 year. Uh, I had my eldest off a couple of years ago, so I got uh, quite adept at yep. handling the uh, furniture <laughs> assembly. Uh, this daughter is uh, she she calls herself the Lego queen, so she goes, "This is just giant sized Lego that I'm putting together." So she uh, she was she was kind of having a blast with it, anyways. Whereas my other daughter liked to sit and watch dad struggle. Yeah, <laughs> as they do. But I'm good with the Wi-Fi. I'm yep. good with that. Except my Wi-Fi when we're recording these, as as you know, in the and, and the listeners don't. By the way, uh, for those of you who are just listening to the podcast, and again, please subscribe. Uh, please give us a review. Uh, we'd love to have you be a, a regular listener if you're not. And uh, as well, if you want to actually see us instead of just listening to us, which is, you know, a good or bad decision, I, I'd say likely you're better just listening. But, we, but if you do want to see us, then, uh, then we are available on YouTube, and you can go and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, uh, because Stu and I are, uh, well, we're getting, we, we've already gotten incredible makeovers, and we're going to continue to work on our looks uh, as, we, uh, as we try to become YouTube stars along with our, uh, our podcast uh, fame, and uh, <laughs> we want Stu's Days to be StuTube's most popular television program. Right, Stu? There you go. There you We're go. going to make dollar cost average boy yeah. a, uh, a superhero that everyone can rely on. Yeah, that's right. So, so, so we're already like four minutes in. People have dropped off. Now we'll <laughs> actually get to what we're going to talk about, uh, which is kind of dropping off in a way. Uh, we, we, we have talked a lot about, and, and you raised a good point because we were, we were having this discussion beforehand. And the whole idea of, of how do we how do we ease into the market, add new money to the market, and we've talked a lot on on all of the different episodes about dollar cost averaging, regular investing, uh, the approaches to increase or establish a position in, in something. But what we have right now, and think about uh, we'll think we'll think about uh, someone someone who's approaching retirement in retirement, maybe even somebody who's been saving for education. And they, you know, they did very well over the last several years in in equity markets. But now you're actually using the money, and you want to de-risk that portfolio. Uh, how do you go about effectively repositioning or de-risking your portfolio uh, when when the time is right to do that? And and so you had a you had a lot of thoughts on 
on because it's just as important as getting you know getting the the the, the initial positioning and the initial structure of the portfolio right is just as important to de-risk to change the positioning or 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 even move uh, h- how you take money out of the portfolio and use it for income or or to uh, once you've reached a particular goal the, the decision is just as important so so what are what are some of your key thoughts around around shifting your portfolio around when when the time is is uh, is right yeah, I think it's I think it's a great question and and um you know I think I think the role of an advisor uh, really yeah. you know comes into play here um or a really good understanding of how your financial plan is developing um you know when you put money to work in the stock market you tend to have a time horizon or in in any capital markets for that matter you tend to have time horizon and you know that you know time is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to the maturity of a financial plan uh, circumstances can change, which can change uh, time horizons. Uh, you know, all sorts of things can happen. Cash flow needs, uh, you name it. Uh, returns can be above the return that you had assumed in your financial plan. So the way that you make changes in that environment, uh, you know, can be a little bit different. Um, so you know, a couple of things are like, well, dollar cost averaging. It works on the way in. It works on the way out. Uh, you know, yeah. as yeah. as things start to you know kind of mature markets have been strong and you say, you know, boy, I'm, I'm way ahead of what I thought was going to be projected in my portfolio. Maybe, you know, maybe that's a time to, you know, rebalance or use dollar cost averaging to, you know, to change uh, the way that uh, the portfolio looks. Um, you know, the second thing is, is, is often what happens is there's some type of life event that is in the financial plan and you kind of want to prepare for that, uh, you know, often, you know, kind of months in advance, you want to start, you know, on a glide path that, um, you know, just as we know, getting in, there's going to be volatility that we want to take advantage of. There's a likelihood of that same volatility on the way out. So we want to, you know, turn that into our friend as well when we when we might alter things on the downside. And then, you know, the other, you know, so there's the kind of like the preset uh, milestones, or even if they're a, a bit of a change in milestones that were in the financial plan, you know, those things are, you know, not straightforward, but they're, you know, manageable on one hand. And then there's the behavioral uh, component of strong markets. And, um, you know, sometimes people will say, the better I feel about my portfolio, that's the time to lower things a little bit because that probably yeah. means everyone feels great. Or, you know, we have a shot across the bow when there's a period of volatility and then we get a rally back and people say, you know, I, I really didn't like that very much. And um, maybe that's a reason to go back and look, you know, am I, you know, do I have my portfolio position in a manner that, um, allows me to look uh, to the long term and um you know we know we know markets uh, you know markets have been volatile and and they and they've been in both directions up and down um yeah. and uh you know valuations in in some areas are a little bit fuller uh you know the average stock still doesn't look too bad um you know we know that the central banks are are likely to lower interest rates which you know you know eventually will kind of reignite a a new and a different type of cycle, which we've we've mentioned a lot about. But anytime you have markets at all time highs, basically, which where we are now, uh, you know, you want to go back and look at that financial plan, and you want to, you know, be honest with yourself uh, around uh, uh, how well has maybe the portfolio done relative to what I had in the books uh, in terms of expectations, or you know, has there been more volatility? Do I need to have you know a conversation around that as well? I, I I really like the 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 idea of the psychology around the financial plan. So first of all, you've got the financial plan, and so if you've got a proper financial plan, you you you've sort of got you know guideposts along the way or 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 mileage markers along the way to say, hey, I'm I'm 20 years from retirement. Uh, I've been saving for 15 years. I expected to be you know right around here right now. But because of market performance over the last you know couple of years, wow, I'm I'm way up here. I'm up I'm I'm up a little I'm I'm way above that threshold, and and the the, the psychology around that would be well, oh wow, this is exciting, this is fantastic. Let's get let let's let's just keep going down the same path. Let's just just maintain all of that risk that we've got as as markets have reached all time highs and valuations are getting stretched. But but the the actual question you should be thinking about is am i now positioned with too much risk 
given that markets have performed at such a high level for a while to to actually almost when things are too good to go wow maybe i should be thinking about taking some of this off the table and at the same time and and this is the really big big one as well and 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 i think people miss more on on this front than than on the on the upside is is getting getting too pessimistic when things go down mm-hmm. right yeah. so so it, it it's you know when when things are bad so again that 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 correction in early august or even what we're seeing today the markets are are having a pretty rough day today that's not the that's not the day where you, you start to think about necessarily selling it's the time to think about okay are there any opportunities being created here but you, you're but most people i think get caught up and it's going up 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 so that's when i get excited and over exuberant and that's when i want to add more when you should really be thinking at that point, well, what, is, is, is this the time I should be adjusting my positions? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's bang on. I think the other thing too, which, you know, we're always doing with inside big portfolios, but there'll be different themes that emerge. Um, you know, like there's the old saying that there's always a bull market somewhere. Um, yeah. You know, so we've had really strong performance, say, from the tech sector. Well, in the last two or three months, we've seen a broadening of the market. We've seen, you know, new uh, stocks and sectors emerge and start to deliver performance. So, you know, is my portfolio exposed to a variety of things? And, you know, with a, you know, a period of time where uh, the central banks are lowering interest rates, economic growth is a little bit foggy, uh, but, you know, we think it's going to pick up, you know, sometimes like dividend and quality oriented stocks, you know, start to perform uh, better. So there's, there's movement between asset classes, there's movement within uh, each asset class, that uh, that portfolio managers can always find things you know to take advantage of, and um, you know in that point around you know kind of the behavioral aspects is really strong because um, you know you you're always trying to have like an expected return from each stock or each asset class, and then you say well what type of assumptions are in that return, and um, and if I'm okay with the assumptions and I'm okay with the expected return, then I know I just have to wait for time like time will take care of that. If I have uh, lower returns and I'm using aggressive assumptions, then you know, those are the situations where you're saying, well, maybe I want to make a tweak there. And uh, in contra, when I have you know great return potential and I'm using very conservative assumptions, then I really want to you know move uh, more of my capital towards that that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, when when you're closer to if if you've got a particular goal in mind, and you're closer to and and I think most importantly with that goal. It, it's where you're actually going to use the money. You're going to need the money that you're investing. And so in that last period, that brief, more brief period before you're actually using the money, you actually want to be, you, you need to be more assured that you're going to have the money there when you need it. That's when you're going to be de-risking and, 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 and maybe, um, maybe even moving some money into more of a cash or a guaranteed type of investment. To make sure that when you hit that end point, that that you have the money you need. So the closer you are to needing the money, that's when this is when it's really important to be thinking about these things. When when you have a longer time horizon, you're not going to be using the money for many, many, many years, 20, 30, 40 years out, then then it's more important to, you know, get the money invested and get it growing for you. Uh, or or, you know, you 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 want to be. No, you, you never want to be in things that are overvalued or dramatically overvalued, but but you know you've got a long long time to take advantage of the of the growth opportunities in in whatever you own. So it's that, that it's that time in terms of when you're going to use the money that's so critical. One hundred percent. Yeah, and I think that's why, as I say, like you know putting money to work in the stock market or in capital markets is you know that's great to be done with an advisor and there's there's ways to do that, but kind of how you manage the portfolio and, and de-risk the portfolio or exit the portfolio as different life events, uh, uh, you know, come your way, you know, that's where an advisor really, you know, really pays off. Yeah. Like I, I you know, I think we even talk about, uh, you know, you think about what we've talked about on all these different episodes over the last several years of, of the podcast, we're often talking about accumulating and growing assets towards a particular goal. Uh, but the hardest decisions are really at the point where you're deciding how to draw down those assets and use them for whatever the original goal of, of accumulating the assets was for, because that's where there's some real strategies. And of course, 
uh, many, many times taxes be, become yep. a big part of that as well. There's a whole uh, and will and estate planning and so many other aspects of your financial plan uh, become part of that decision. So it's an even more complicated uh, discussion than just the accumulation phase. It's like, well, I'm going to put away this much. Here's my investment strategy. Want to save this much, but then how do I make sure that that money lasts all the way through my my life? Yeah, no, it's bang on, and uh, you know, to go for a full circle, like I took a course on tax at Queens uh, many years ago, and I remember the prof saying, "I'm not sure if you'll pass my class, but this will save you lots of money during your lifetime." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. Uh, that's good, and and uh, so uh, so so your your daughter is uh, heavily into uh, to finance. I take it, Stu. Well, we'll see. But so far, both of them are science oriented, uh, you know, chemistry, Ooh. biology, that type of thing. So not a lot of help when it comes to homework from uh, from my standpoint. Well, my uh, my my daughter is also in uh, in in the sciences, but uh, since uh, you know you you got you got all the brains on uh, in in this operation. Uh, <laughs> Maybe my uh, maybe my daughter the, the the chemistry that she knows is uh, is more uh, real life chemistry. So we'll we'll see how. I, th- I think in both our cases, I think in both our cases, Dave, if we were playing that old operation game that we grew up with, where you you know you'd be sitting there with the little tweezers <laughs> trying to, neither of us would be uh, much of a role model for for where our daughters are headed. Nope worked uh, worked in the financial services industry for uh, thirty two years, and I have saved zero lives. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, I, and, and I, I imagine that's not going to change over the next five as I, as I continue to go. So, yeah. but, uh, but we have changed lives cause you do need money. So, uh, so that, that's a good thing, but the, but the financial plan and the plan around how you, how you, you wind down and shift the, the risk in your portfolio, critically important. Yep. So Stu, thank you again. And, uh, we'll, uh, I'm, I'm going to go and, uh, and hug my wife because, uh, She's feeling lonely in the uh, in the big house. Apparently, the dogs aren't cutting it for her. She misses her daughters. <laughs> well, it's hard not to. It's hard not to. All right, Stu, we'll catch up with you next week. Take care. This recording has been provided by RBC Global Asset Management, Inc. for informational purposes only and is not intended to be investment or financial advice. You should consult your own legal, accounting, tax, investment, or financial planning advisors before engaging in any transactions.